The sun's going crazy with activity, and Comet Shushin Sean Atlas continues to put on a show after making its closest pass to Earth. Let's take a look at what you can go out to see in the night sky for November of 2024. I'm Michael Martin, and this is Late Night Astronomy. We begin this month with an object that we don't normally spend much time talking about, the sun. It's currently at the peak of solar activity. That's why for many of us, twice in the past six months, the northern lights have stretched down to some impressive mid and lower latitudes. First and foremost, never observe the sun without safe, certified solar equipment. And if you own a pair of solar glasses or a solar telescope, make sure that they're not damaged and go out to see if you can see some of the incredibly large sunspots currently on the surface of the sun during this peak of activity. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for updates on when you might be able to see the northern and southern lights at night, and check out spaceweather.com for more information on daily solar activity. Let's turn our attention from the sun to the Leonids meteor shower. To see this shower, go outside after midnight on the morning of November 18th and face towards the east. Rising into the sky will be the constellation Leo, where the meteors will appear to emanate from. On most years, we can hope to see 10 to 15 meteors per hour from the Leonids, but sadly this year, the moon will be right overhead, washing out all but the brightest meteors for us to see. Even though the moon can sometimes ruin meteor showers, it's still an enjoyable target to go out to observe. Let's begin with its phases for the month of November, beginning with a new moon on November 1st. First quarter moon on November 9th, full moon on November 15th, and a third quarter moon on November 22nd. The moon also makes several close passes to objects this month, beginning with Mercury on November 3rd, Venus November 4th, M45 the Pleiades November 16th, Jupiter on the 17th, and Mars on the 20th. The moon will actually pass in front of several objects this month as well, in events known as occultations. The first occultation will happen with Saturn on November 10th for parts of South, Central, and North America. We then have another impressive occultation, this time of Neptune on November 11th for major parts of North America. An occultation will occur for the star Beta Tauri on November 17th for parts of Africa and Asia, and the star Spica on the 27th for parts of North America. I'll leave a link to a website called inthesky.org so you can see if you can go out to see these occultations from where you live around the world. There are some nice opportunities this month to go out to view every single planet in our solar system. And let's begin with the most impressive one this month, which is still going to be Saturn. Along with the previous mentioned occultation, Saturn is out with great views from sunset until around midnight in the southwest. And just behind Saturn, you'll find Neptune. Moving over to the eastern sky, Earth makes its closest approach to Uranus on November 16th, and Jupiter rises to nice heights by 9 p.m., making it an amazing target throughout the entire month. Staying in the east, the red planet Mars will rise to nice heights for views around 1 a.m. Moving to the early evening sky in the west, you will find Mercury at its highest point, but still a tough target to see around November 19th with Venus continuing to move higher and higher in the southwest throughout the entire month. After an incredible few weeks of viewing comet Shushin Shan Atlas after it made its closest pass to Earth on October 12th, it remains an impressive target to go out to see with a pair of binoculars and especially a telescope for the month of November. To see it, go outside about an hour and a half after sunset and face towards the west. At the start of the month, you can find it with a pair of binoculars or a telescope, leaving the constellation Ophiuchus, right near the stars 70 and 67 Ophiuchi. By the middle of the month, it'll probably be best viewed just through a telescope as it travels through the constellation Serpens. As the month comes to a close, it'll enter the constellation Aquella. This has truly been a special comet to go out to observe, and for me personally, it's probably the second best that I've ever seen in my life, with Hale-Bopp in the late 1990s 
being number one on my list. If you've been out to see Comet Shushin, Sean Atlas, please be sure to let us know about your experience and the best comet you've been able to see in your lifetime in the comment section below. Now let's leave our solar system behind and travel into deep space. It's important to know for this portion of the video in particular, getting away from light pollution, and that does include the moon, is gonna to lead to a much better experience observing or imaging these targets. For November, let's go outside about an hour and a half after sunset and face towards the northeast. There you will come across the constellation Perseus, and our first target, the Little Dumbbell Nebula. This planetary nebula is quite faint at a visual magnitude of plus 10, but it was more impressive than I expected through my 8-inch Dobsonian telescope and Bortle 5 skies, revealing a dim smudge at 48 times magnification and more structure at 100 times and 200 times magnifications. Moving down from the little dumbbell, we come to a favorite target of mine through a wide-field eyepiece, the double clusters. Throw in a low-powered eyepiece and enjoy the hundreds of stars contained in these two compact clusters. The bluish-white stars of these clusters pop out of the background of space through long-exposure astrophotography. Let's move over to the constellation Cassiopeia for our next few objects, beginning with one that I've never been able to view through a telescope, but is a favorite of mine to image with long-exposure photography, the Heart and Soul Nebulas. Located about six to 7,000 light-years away from Earth, I was able to capture over two hours worth of data on this target last year. I've got a video covering more incredible deep sky objects that I'll be sure to leave a link to in the description below. Those are just some of the most incredible things that you can get out to see in the night sky for the month of November. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. But most importantly, let us know what you're getting out to observe an image in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.